welcome to Sydney Craft Week. My name is Kim Vredeveld. I am a potter and educator at Scented Ceramics in Yamina Beach on the Central Coast. And I am with you today to show you how to build a ceramic pinch pot candle holder vase. So you can actually use it for a candle or you can also use it as a vase for a not a whole heap of uh, flowers, but just a bud. So without further ado, pop that down. Um, so we're making it in a few different pieces, which I have here. So we'll start by making a pinch pot and then we'll make another one. Join them together like so. We'll make another small pinch pot, join it on top. A small ring if you choose to do a candle holder. Uh, a uh, handle if you wish and this is just a little attachment that we'll need to make and another coil which we'll need to make around the outside. So, we'll pop those down. We'll pop those down. So first of all you start with a your pinch pot and we'll grab a block of clay, about, about this big should be enough, and just squeeze it into your hands. Doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but you can smack it to get the lumps out. So we'll roll one and then one more the same size because we'll need the tops to attach to each other. It's quite relaxing doing this once you get into it. You can get your frustrations out for the week too. <laughs> you give it a bit of a smack till you find it looking more like a ball shape. So then we have two balls, similar size. The next step is to make a pinch pot, you put your thumb in the center about two thirds of the way down and you squeeze with your four fingers on the outside while pressing with your thumb on the inside. And you don't want to use too much clay up the top, you want to keep it fairly thick to begin with. And you're just going to use your thumb to smooth the clay around and rotate in your other hand. You can also use your fingers on the outside to smooth up if it's feeling a little bit lumpy. But you want to keep an even consistency around the walls. And you just do this by pinching. And you don't have to be in a hurry. It's very relaxing. You can do this by the TV. So once you've got a fairly decent bowl, and don't be too concerned with the um, shape at this point because we will use our paddle to, to smooth it out and give it a bit of a paddle. So when you've got your two pots, I'll use this one that I've made earlier you need to score the tops of your rims. And I just do that by dabbing a little bit of water into a bowl and dabbing onto the top of the rim and giving it a good score. And this will seal both sides of the pots. Not too much water. Water is actually your enemy when you're working with clay. Um, you want to use as least amount of water as possible. So once you've scored both your rims, then you join. It doesn't matter if one's a little bit bigger than the other because we can work those in. You just want to get a fairly decent seal. So you give it a bit of a, bit of a turn each way. Like I said, don't worry about the shape at this point. So it's starting to look like a bit of an egg at the moment, but don't be concerned. 
Now we just need to join the two bits of clay together. And to do this, I'll use a rib tool and I use the blunt end, not the serrated end. And this will be included in your kit that you receive by post. So you just wanna drag the tool upwards, upwards and downwards and across. And if you've got some extra clay, you just wanna smooth it all in. And if it's feeling a little thick up one end, you can just smooth that down too. So once you're happy with that side, you just keep going. It might look like it's denting a little bit in the middle, but don't worry, because we're gonna add a coil to that. So you're smoothing in the clay and this will join the pot together. And at this point, it's airtight at the moment. So you can play around with the shape a little, but just be careful of cracks. When it's hot, you'll see that this cracks just formed here. Just give it a little scrape down and it should be fine. And we're also gonna add the coil now. So to roll a coil, you just grab a chunk of, chunk of your clay. Bring it between your hands and then roll. And it's good to roll with your fingers wide. And you just sort of work the clay towards each end. Sometimes it'll feel a bit lumpy and you just want to press down and squeeze it where you can feel the lumps. But keep rolling. And I'll take that off. It doesn't need to be too big, this coil, because it's just going to sit around the outside of the join. So once it's about half a centimetre thick, maybe a little less. You just want to press down with your fingers. And that's ready to almost ready to attach. We'll do our scoring again with the wet rib. And a cross hatch is always good. Not too wet, just a little, little damp. And go all the right way around. And then with your coil, you also want to give this a little score as well. And do the same technique with the cross hatch. Then we join where our cut is. You can usually see the indent. And I just wrap that around. and I give it a little push into the clay on one end. Press into your egg shape. And then you just peel off the last little bit and rub it in. It's nice when the clay is nice and soft as it is today, but when you're working in the heat, it can be, can dry out very quickly. So just be aware when it's hot, just to keep your clay wrapped up and moist. With this, we do the same along here, just to give it some added strength. And just up and down again, all the way around the pot. And if you like these textures, you can achieve those at the end as well. Otherwise we can rub them out with our other rib, which is rubber, which smooths everything out, which I'll do in a moment. So we've got our ball. It's starting to take shape. You can give it a bit of a bit of a squeeze on each, each end. And this is where the paddle comes in handy because you can give it a bit of a, a bit of a tap. And blend all your clay together and it just 
makes your clay a lot, lot firmer and your piece hopefully won't crack in the kiln. We'll be firing our work to 12, about 1200 degrees, uh, which is a mid firing in an electric kiln um, to be dropped off in your minor beach, which I'll give you some instructions uh, once your piece is dry. So we're getting our nice shape there. Um, before we open it up, we're going to make the, the top part of our piece. You can choose to, at this point, not add the candle part and just keep it as a vase. And you might want to do a tube going up that way, or you could put feet on the bottom. You could still put the handle on. It's totally up to you, whichever you decide. You're the creative master at this point. So for today, I'm going to make a candle holder. So the next part is we'll grab another smaller piece of clay this time. And you can make it any size. You've just got to feel comfortable with making pinch pots. You could make a pinch pot this big and join them together. But I suggest you start off small to begin with. The smaller you go, the smaller you start with, the easier it is. So. so I've made just a small pinch pot now. And this is going to go on the top for the rim. And totally the same as the last uh, pinch pot, the larger pinch pots. But we're not going to join them together this time. So there's the pinch pot. Um, what we're going to do now is add our coil. So we'll make another small coil just to go on the top to give it a bit of a neck. And it's the same principle for rolling. And it doesn't have to be very thick, just a very thin, thin coil. There we go. Same principle with the attachment, scoring. And then we'll score on here as well. And then that will just sit on top. And it's the same like we did the coil around the middle. And squeeze that on, squeeze that on there, and then the same attachment technique. Or you can use your finger as well, or your thumb, whichever makes you feel good. It's starting to get some shape now. So if you want to keep adding coils up this way, that's a possibility as well. And then once you're happy with the height, you just cut a hole in the middle. You can never put a piece like this in the kiln without a hole in some spot because clay shrinks and air inside does not. So when it's put in a kiln and the clay shrinks and the air doesn't, it can cause quite an explosion and ruin other people's work, which has happened before in my own kiln, but we try to avoid that. So the next stage is putting on your small pinch pot. And we'll do the same with the join and the score. We'll score the coil on top. And then you just give it the same sort of little squeeze downwards and press with your thumbs inside. And that's feeling pretty firm now. From here, we want to blend, blend our top pinch pot into our two bottom pinch pot body. 
So this is the same technique. You can use the serrated side, which is helpful in pushing the clay down, or you can use the flat side and you're just scraping. And you're always supporting with your fingers on the inside. Whenever you're doing any scraping or pushing, it's a little hard when it's closed, but when it's got a thin edge, always support from the inside. So, it's starting to take shape now. So at this point, you can give it a roll on your board. It's starting to look a bit like a bowling pin, but feel free to give it a bit of a play at this point. Um, it's pretty robust. So if you kind of like organic shapes, you, can, you could possibly keep it like that. Or if you like something a little bit more structured, this is where the paddle comes in handy. part is putting on our handle. So I will roll a coil and you want it about probably a good centimetre thick because you want it to hold your pot. And give it a roll. Same principle. And if you can see little bits, cracks like that, you can just press your thumb down and smooth them out. Because they're a little bit hard once you put them on the pot. You can chop. And then you can figure out where you would like your, your handle. You could have it up here, like so. You could even have a huge handle. It's totally up to you. I think this size is working pretty well. You could have it down here. You could make two handles. The choice is yours. For today, we'll just do it, the one handle. So I'm pretty happy. It's good to spin it round a little bit because I can see mine's off center here. So when you're working in 3D, it's always good to, to spin it round 360 and also it's good to stand back as well and see how it's looking. So I'm going to score the ends. And score the ends here. And I add a little bit more water to this this scoring because it's going to take quite a bit of weight and the more water you add at this point it's making a slip and a slip we normally make up with clay and water but for this exercise we're only making two, two uh, scores so I'm just going to wet it a little bit more. and you really want to give it a good rough, roughing out. And that's looking good there. So we'll attach, and you want to just give it a bit of a gentle but firm attachment there. And that's looking straight. And at this point, always remember to take your bits of dirty clay off your tools and you just want to, any little bits that are extra are always good to keep as well because you can make a slip and you can use them to repair 
other things. You never have to waste anything with, with clay, which is great. So with our handle, we just want to attach that now and it's probably easier to do it with your thumb. It's a little tricky to get underneath there. I'll hold it up that way. Oh, this tool's really good for doing this actually. So let me press that down. And this is a modeling tool, which is great for making indents and texture and all sorts of stuff. It's great for pushing the clay down. So once that looks fairly joined, don't worry how neat it looks at this point because we'll clean all that up. Um, we'll make two small coils just to wrap around both sides of the handle. And this will just give it extra, extra support. And same principle with the scoring. You don't need too much water at this point. Um, because we've still got quite a bit of slip on from when we did it earlier. You just want to wrap your coil all the way around and smooth inwards into your handle. And you can also use this tool at this point as well, just to scrape a little further. And we'll roll another coil for below. And score again. That's going all the way around like the last. and just lifting up with your finger. And then attaching to the body. And you can also give it a bit of a squeeze at that point too. starting to get there and at this point you just want to give it a bit of a clean up and shaping do some more shaping sometimes there'll be little cracks that form down the bottom so you just keep an eye on those as you're working and keep spinning it around be careful not to hit your handle as you're slapping Now if you like a smoother, a smoother surface, this is a rubber kidney and this is really nice for smoothing out. And this is where you start to get a lovely finish. I can see a little, some cracks forming there. I'm just gonna smooth those. Once it dries a little bit more, you can keep working on this as well. If you leave it for a day wrapped up in plastic, uh, you should be able to give it a bit more finessing. So at this point, you can either add your inside bit for a tapered candle, or you could 
take out the centre and just have it as a vase. Um, it's entirely up to you at this point. I'm going to make it into a tapered candle today. So I will show you how to make a ring for inside. So it's just a coil. Perhaps a half a centimetre to a centimetre in thickness. And then this is where your rolling pin at home will come in handy. And you just want to roll it out and then go this way as well. It doesn't have to be very thick, it just needs to support the candle. And then you can cut, you can cut just by your eyesight or you can use a ruler, I'm just gonna cut. And this is also a good way to make rings if you want to make rings out of your leftover bits of clay as well. And you just grab a little bit of water on here and give it a score on both ends. And attach and give it a bit of a squeeze. You can use your thumb just to spread the clay out on both sides and on the inside. Okay. Then the last part is to score on the inside and attach your ring. And to do this, it might be better to use your modeling tool. And you just want to rough it up a little inside and rough it up on the bottom of one side of the ring. And then give it a bit of a squeeze and press down. You can also use um, a little wet paintbrush and that will just smooth any edges and also help attach the ring to the body. Now at this point, we just want to pop four holes inside, make sure they've gone all the way through, which I can feel that. And that's going to let the air out of the ceramic piece. Otherwise, if you didn't want the holes there, you could also put a hole in the bottom too. So once your piece dries a little more, this is quite wet, so it's looking a little a little crazy but you can keep working on it but a nice time to keep working on it is when it's dried out a little bit and I made this one earlier today and you can really start to really start to smooth out the clay and you can use both ends of your rib tool. This is my favorite tool, by the way. I use it often. <laughs> and you can really go from the bottom to the top. And don't be afraid at this point because it's quite solid. You can also give it a bit of a tap as well. I wouldn't work it too much only because it's starting to go a little hard, but if you like a geometrical shape, this is the time to do it. You just got to watch out for cracks. It's starting to crack there a little bit. So if you do see a crack forming, just give it a little rub with your nail. 
and then just a little bit of water, not too much though. You want to stay away from water as much as you can. So this is a good dryness to work on, on some geometrical styling. And then I made this one a little earlier too. This one's dried out quite a lot, but you can also add texture. So anything you find around the home, any things in the kitchen, um, whatever you can find that has a bit of texture and a bit of weight behind it, you can start adding texture. You can also add stamps, which you can make your own stamps with the scrap pieces of clay, which is just rolling a coil and then cutting out a little section at the top and then putting your design inside. And these make really effective patterns too. So it's really endless what you can do with clay. It's really up to your imagination. Um, hand building is, can be functional, it can be sculptural, it's very versatile. I use all my plates from home to eat off. Uh, I've made sculptures that I exhibit in Sydney and on the central coast. Uh, it's just a medium that's very relaxing to work with. It's from the earth and you're using all the elements, uh, fire and air and water. Uh, and it's a lovely, lovely medium. So there's just a few examples of what you can do with a very small amount of clay. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll include my email address in the kit with information on where to drop your dry pieces off for firing um, and when to pick them up. And I hope this has inspired you on your clay journey. Thank you.